What's up, everybody? My name is Juwan Rohan, and this is the Misguided Podcast. We intend to guide you to a better future. I'm sitting here with Sarah Robinson, a real estate investor. How are you guys doing today? What's up? Uh, what's up? What's up? Good morning. <laughs> it is 9.30. You're California time, correct? Yep. Yeah, I'm in SoCal. In LA? Wait, what or 9.30. Yeah, yeah, 9.30. Yeah. I know. I had to look, right? I was like, um... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, where is where in SoCal? SoCal. Uh, we live in the Inland Empire, Ontario, East Bell area. So relatively close to LA and um, where we have properties at in JT, Joshua Tree, California. So pretty uh, central location. How far are you from Joshua Tree? So it's about an hour and a half drive to Joshua Tree. So oh, okay. not too bad. You know, we don't go too often. Um, we manage all of our properties remotely. So uh when we do have to do that hour and a half drive it's not so bad yeah and plus like i feel like an hour and a half drive in la is is like pretty standard like even if you're going like yeah, 10 hours sure. so yeah <laughs> yeah <that's true. laughs> um well cool well i appreciate you coming on here i'll get into a little story about how <clears throat> i reached out to you and found you so the audience knows um <clears throat> i saw you on tiktok and you guys is you guys were doing videos on joshua tree i'm from california so i knew about joshua tree i've uh, always been interested in investing there i think i saw like i mean a couple years ago you know everyone started buying airbnbs and tiny homes and putting them on joshua tree so it became very popular and then it started to become very popular to the celebrities and you i think like some big time article wrote some big time magazine wrote an article saying that um, all the celebrities were, were coming to Joshua Tree to get away and, and record their albums, do whatever and stuff like that. I've so, never heard of that. Yeah. So I was uh, I was reading that article yeah, and then cool. you guys kept popping up and I was like, OK, you know, maybe I'll reach out to them. Um, uh, and then I was like, oh, they probably won't respond. And then I just kept seeing you guys. And I kept seeing the channel grow and I was like, all right, I got to give it a shot. Oh, yeah. so cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, and guess what? I responded, didn't yeah. I? Yeah, you did. You did <laughs> for sure. I was like, let me get her before she comes too famous right now. And so same thing with Tony. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, awesome. You know, when you post stuff, you don't know who it's reaching or like, I never would have known that you saw our content, you know, a few times unless you didn't tell yeah. me that, you know, so, ah, that's so cool. Yeah, the TikTok yeah, yeah. algorithm is working in my favor. <laughs> it really is. And it's crazy too, because like the TikTok algorithm, like I'll post a video and then I'll get like a DM from someone from like elementary school. And they're like, yo, I haven't seen no you in way. years. I'm like, how did that work? That's crazy. That's yeah. so cool. So um, that's but yeah, yeah, thanks for reaching out. <laughs> of course, of course. So Sarah, you're a real estate investor. Your husband is a real estate investor. Um, and he is also the host of the Bigger Pockets um rookie podcast correct yes cool cool yeah so uh, the real estate rookie show him and ashley um are the co-hosts yeah that's super cool yeah yeah, yeah. um i almost worked for uh david green actually um on at oh, his brokerage cool. out here uh but now I'm, with, I'm actually with fly homes have you heard of fly homes i've never heard of fly homes no oh, what okay. are they <laughs> what are they? They're bro. <laughs> they're just uh, some some fly kids. I don't, I don't know. Um, they're they're a brokerage actually, a, a, like a new startup brokerage. Um, and there's a couple of cool programs we offer that a lot of people are coming up, coming to us for, which is like the all cash. You know, we buy the house all cash for the the person. Oh, that's awesome. Um, there's a trade up program that we do where if you want to buy before you sell. Um, type of thing, and there's also a guaranteed sale where we're guarantee your sale if it doesn't. Uh, if your house doesn't sell, which it would in this market, but if it doesn't, we'll buy it from you. So wow, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, enough about me. Uh, let's get let's get back to you. <laughs> We're gonna go into your story. We're gonna start from early on. So where are you from? I'm from here, born and raised here in the IE, um, oh, okay. Ranch Cucamonga. Um, I met Tony in high school. So we've been dating for a really long time. We're 30 years old, and um, yeah, like I said, we've been dating since we were seniors in high school so that's cool are you tired of each other yet (laughs) you know not yet not yet i'm surprised but yeah yeah, we just got married last year um Hmm. they had a covid wedding and uh literally almost everybody in our wedding got covid because of our wedding so don't recommend Uh, having a wedding damn that is crazy well no one was vaccinated yet so 
right you're right it was right before the vaccinations came out but still so embarrassing and awful experience is, yeah. <laughs> but yeah so um that's how i know my husband yeah well that's and cool he got yeah he got into real estate himself um I'd say maybe four years ago, we were out of college and, you know, started working our careers and he was in, um, what's the <laughs> terminology in like warehouse distribution. That's what he did. Okay. So he worked for big companies like Target and Tesla and grew that corporate ladder really quickly. And he was doing awesome. But then out of nowhere, he was like really interested in real estate. And I was clueless. I was working in the entertainment industry, had he would tell me what he's learning. He would read books, listen to podcasts, try to put me on to these things he was learning. And I just had zero interest. Um, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm very confused with everything you're saying, but cool, you know? And then, so we just got engaged. We just bought our primary residence. And then he, this was in 2019. Then out of nowhere, he was like, hey, babe, you know, all these things that I've been telling you about real estate. He's like, I think I'm finally going to pull the trigger. And buy my first investment property and he was like what do you think you know at this point we didn't have joint bank accounts or anything so he was just kind of looking for my blessing to be like all right cool you know so yeah I, I trust him you know and I know he did his due diligence because he has been self-teaching himself for, for quite some time now so he pulled the trigger and bought a few long-term rentals out in Louisiana in Shreveport Louisiana and yeah that's that's how we got started in the real estate game. Nice, nice. That that's yeah. really cool. You you sound like my fiance. Like literally, that's how like my fiance is like. Uh, you know, Does I she feel not like. Care? Yeah, she's. I mean, she's like. Yeah, you know, I trust you. Like, I know you're doing your due diligence. Right. Like, yeah, go for it. You know, do and super like supportive, which is 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 amazing. But she's just like has no idea about this stuff. You know. Yeah, <laughs> we talk about that all the people. Uh, you know, now that I'm more hands on in the business, we get couples that reach out to us all the time on Instagram and uh, on our comments on our YouTube channel and just say, how did Sarah get on board? Because I did an episode on Tony's podcast where we talked about how I wasn't really on board at first, but on board can mean a lot of things to different people. So like for you and your fiance, seems like you're okay with just her giving you the thumbs up and like yeah. the support you need, you know, you don't necessarily need or want her to be hands-on, you know? Yeah. So True, true. Um, I think, yeah, I think the support from a spouse can come in different ways. And yeah, initially, I just personally wasn't very interested. So that's why I wasn't involved. But but also because you probably didn't really know, right? Like, it, absolutely, I, I, I figure yeah. like it comes to a, a, a point of knowing before you can be interested. Like once I started to like what I did and how I introduced it to my fiance was like, hey, you know, next year, um, we're, we're going to refinance, you know, the house isn't even in my name, it's in hers. I'm like, this is this is the <laughs> game plan. We're going to refinance the house. We're going to pull out this amount. We're going to buy this many houses. And um, this is how much cash flow we're going to get at this time, right? Obviously, it can change uh, over the yeah. next year and stuff like that. And she saw the numbers and was like, oh, so you mean I could stay at home and work? from home <laughs> hey you know that was my moment too yeah. Tony showed me the numbers I was like wait I could put my job yeah 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 so <laughs> I was like uh so for those of you guys watching if your wife is not on board just show her the numbers and yeah that'll get her <laughs> yeah yeah mm. but um no so yeah it's just a simple like conversation and and you know obviously it's not just one conversation that that got you right it was multiple he's Absolutely. talking about it over you know one oh, or two yeah. years so yeah. yeah, he would like every dr long drive we had, like he'd go into the beach. He, instead of playing music, he'd pop on like a podcast. You know, that's I'm like, God damn it, we're listening to another podcast. Yeah, yeah that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly. I need to meet yeah, your husband. <laughs> it did the trick. I would like, you know, I think real estate can be a little bit confusing for someone who's just like totally oblivious. So listening to a lot of, you know, the terminology and stuff, it just like can be confusing and scary. It's like real estate is about taking risk. So yeah. I feel like if you don't know, like fear and not knowing comes hand in hand, you know? Absolutely. So yeah. I'm like, you talking about messing with our money and I don't know what the hell these terms are. Like uh, I I'm not in, you know, yeah. but yeah, once you start to educate yourself or, or, you know, start to learn the basics, it doesn't sound so scary, you know? And yeah. when you see other people like your age doing it, I think that is, kind of blown my mind too absolutely absolutely cool cool um so 
do you know what uh, like was that your first introduction to real estate or had, does your family was your family invested in it as a young age and you still didn't understand it or was that your first introduction? No, yeah, Tony was literally my first introduction to real estate. My dad, we, we grew up, you know, middle class. My my dad would he owned restaurants, um, okay, and would lose them and would get a new restaurant. But he would always tell us like the best way to get rich is with real estate. He would always preach that, even though he didn't have, you know, he just had our personal res- residence. So, and then Tony, his dad, um, I'm I'm not sure where he worked for, but like a trucking company, and he was like, you know, like the big boss there well not the big boss he had a boss but he was like the main manager there Mm -hmm. and when the um uh, crash happened they let him go just like that and Mm -hmm. that kind of made him realize like working for someone and solely relying on that w-2 job is more risky than putting your Um, money into other that's crazy because i never thought about like how more risky it is but you hearing you say that it's like whoa that is true because you're it's not in in your hands right when when nothing is in your hands that's risky (laughs) absolutely like you're at the mercy of these companies that you work for you know people i used to work for iheart radio huge company and they let because of COVID, which you know, a lot of people lost their jobs, but people that had worked there, you know, that were my bosses that had worked there since they got out of college and they were now in their 50s. So dedicated 20, 30 years of their lives to these, that company and were let go like this because of COVID. Like what? Isn't that's that wild? Crazy. You know, that's so, wild. I would not yeah. I would think it would be like the bottom of the totem yeah. pole. Like um what so what'd you do yeah. at iHeart? Uh, so my last position was, I was big boys, um, executive assistant. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. So I, yeah. I was wondering when you said you were in the in- entertainment industry, um, what, what you did. So, okay. You were the executive assistant. Well, cool. Like any, any crazy stories, uh, being in I, I heard right I mean, like- I mean, like literally there was just artists there all the time. Like I, I went into the bathroom and Kim Kardashian was in there too, you know, just yeah. like, you just got to play it cool. You yeah. know, it's part of the rules. I'm like, hey, hey girl, yeah. wash my hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. How long were you uh, into like the radio stuff? Like fresh out of uh, college? For a while. Yeah, fresh out of college. That's what I went to school for. And um, I stopped what uh, last year. Yeah, early last year. Do you miss it? So, you know, I feel like no job will ever compare to that one just because it, it's fun. Every day was fun. Every day was exciting. There was, you know, events every day. You know, it, it, there's just literally never going to be a job that is going to be as fun as that. So yeah. I do miss that part. And the people were fun. You know, I felt like a, I met some of my best friends there and working with icons like Big Boy, you know, LNK, yeah. like that's awesome. That's super cool. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, that sounds like a fun, fun job. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and, and get back to real estate and talk about um, how you guys first started with um, real estate, but also Airbnb, because, um, you know, a lot of people like the long term rentals um, and short term rentals are becoming a thing now. Uh, so how'd you guys yeah. get started with that? So I kind of gave that story already, how we got into real estate. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really we, it was more so Tony and I was just that cheerleader wife. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's when he got, I believe, four long-term, like, beat up, you know, houses in random ass Shreveport. We've never even been Wait, there. Wait, he got you know? four four at the same time? Um, Maybe back, not at the same time, like back, but like uh, okay. back to back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. And um. So that happened and I wasn't interested. He would tell me the numbers and I was like, well, people after, you know, all said and done, like he was only pocketing like a hundred, 200 off each property. And that just did not excite me. You know, yeah. so I was like, okay, whatever. And then he met, he, he started to attend a lot of uh, meetups, uh, real estate meetups here locally. And he uh, met a guy who's a good friend of ours now, Alex, and he um transition from long term to short term and he had just bought his first cabin in the smoky mountains in tennessee and showed us his numbers and what he was making and uh, his projections and it blew our minds and that's when tony shared his new uh 
appreciation for short-term rentals to me and his idea like, hey, I think we got to shift over. And for some reason that kind of like sparked my interest. And that is the moment that I was like, I'm, I'm in, on yeah. I'm on board. Like I, I come, you know, I'm super, you know, people oriented. I can provide great customer service. So I was like, I can be the face of our uh, properties, you know? And um, so, yeah. So after our friend Alex got that property, we looked on the market and got our first cabin out there and absolutely has been killing it. So where is it again? Where's the the Smoky Mountains in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Tennessee. So you don't know where it's at. You're from California. You don't know where that's at. Sorry. (laughs) Nah, but it seems like a lot of people go there. We literally have never been there. We've never heard of it. Like we felt so stupid. We're like, what are the Smoky Mountains? We have no (laughs) clue. But it's um, one of the most visited national parks by far. Like, let's say, you know, Joshua Tree gets visited a million, has a million visitors per year. The Smoky Mountains gets like 10 million. I'm guessing on numbers. But it was like by far way more visited than any of the other national parks. That's awesome. Can can we talk, uh, can we talk numbers for the audience? Uh, Do you remember any of the numbers from that, that place in Smoky Mountain? Oh, I don't. Tony's the number guy. (laughs) <laughs> so sorry I should have got that information it's okay. I can look at on our TikTok and stuff but our oh, we have a YouTube channel the real uh, the real estate Robinsons and we've made videos breaking down the numbers and stuff like that but okay um so do you do you we, remember any like of what like a down payment was for a place like that just so, so people for know all how of much? Our, yeah so we use um vacation home loans so we put 10 percent down for all of our properties okay Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. So let, let me text Tony while we're while we're while you can chat and I'm gonna text him. Give me give me the numbers. <laughs> hey, hey babe, can can you give me the numbers on Smoky Mountains real quick? <laughs> um cool, cool. That that sounds really cool. Yeah, Airbnb is is amazing. I have uh, one of my best friends. He actually used to be the co-host of this podcast. Um, but he he does he started off with rental arbitrage on Airbnb. Oh, cool. And yeah, like yeah. that's his thing. He's like branched all over the country um really really good income um and it's just it's amazing so yeah um, we hear we we know a lot of people that do rental arbitrage we've personally never done it but we've recently just um had a meeting with uh someone that tony met that killing it in arbitrage and we're kind of down to you know start doing that yeah yeah i bet uh, but a lot of places are getting like way stricter now because now the secret's out right uh yeah but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I've been, um, we're actually been looking at places in, in Austin right now. Um, oh, cool. And so uh, hopefully close on those, those a little bit, but yeah, that's oh. uh, Airbnb is super cool. I love it. Um, have you, have you guys tried like, are there any, oh, uh, VRBO for the vacation home stuff? Uh, Verbo. Yeah. yeah so Verbo. We're, we're on Verbo and um, Airbnb, but um, Airbnb for some reason just generates way more bookings than Verbo does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're on both platforms. So a lot of other short-term rental hosts use like booking.com or personal, um, links, but we, Airbnb has been amazing for us. Yeah. Oh wait, I got the numbers. Tony got, texted me back. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> Damn. He yeah. knows it like that though, huh? He's a, he's oh, a he does. Guy. Yeah. He's the number guy. I'm just the, the, <laughs> the Airbnb girl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So he, we bought it for five ninety, was the purchase price. So the down payment ten percent was fifty nine, okay. and it will um, gross at least one fifty or more. Uh, a year. Yeah. That's solid. Let me see. I'm gonna do yeah. Some, so. Do some more. And then we we got that cabin without ever going there, without ever seeing it. We um have a, a realtor out there she's pretty popular avery carl um her company's called the short-term shop um a lot of people that purchase out there use them and they they also when you purchase with them they do like this beginner's course to airbnb and that's what we took and you know a combination what is this called they're, they're the short-term shop by avery carl what and what so are they, they just like teach you how to run uh, Airbnb. So yeah, so they're a um, brokerage. Oh, sure. <laughs> Is that what you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so do they sell houses? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, then yeah, there'd be a brokerage. Okay. Yeah, so that's who we use um, uh, when we purchase properties out there. And um, so when you purchase, I don't know if they're still doing this or not, but when we did, at least they 
they offered like a, a course um, to teach you how to run an Airbnb. So that was super awesome. You know, I think you had to pay an additional amount. I'm not sure, but um, oh, they, you know, they for a newbie, a lot of a lot of reviews. They're five stars. Oh yeah, yeah, they're they're great. They're super well known out there. She has a book with Bigger Pockets. Um, Avery Carl. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm definitely gonna look into this. Um, that's so cool. So you purchased the house through them, right? Yes, all of our properties. So we have we bought another one later. So we have two out there, and we currently have four under contract that are new construction and should be. They keep pushing back construction, but they should be all wrapped up by end of next year. I mean, no, end of next year, early next year. Okay, so how many properties do you guys uh, own right now? So we have, uh, I think, a total of nine. So two so far up and running in, jo I mean, in the Smoky Mountains. Okay. And then Joshua Tree, a loose count, um, but I think it's uh, maybe eight now. We just sold our, our first one that we got out there. Um, so I think up and running are eight, and we have two that we're rehabbing right now, and we're we're deciding if we should either flip them we're like getting them airbnb ready to potentially keep them and put them up on airbnb okay. or just um flip them and sell them to other investors and we did all the heavy lifting for them you know what cities are those all in joshua tree yeah oh okay okay is that yeah, where yeah, most yeah. most of them are yeah. yeah 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 so we have all of them in joshua tree and then the two in the smokies Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I've been looking at Joshua. How how much would, like would a house be for in like Joshua Joshua Tree? Like you know, when we start, so we we just kind of grew really quickly. You know, we started when we first start, bought that cabin that I was talking about in the Smokies. Yep. I think it was in August, and then till now we got you know these ten properties. You know, yep. so it, it's been a pretty wild ride, but the the reason I bring that up is like the market from the day we purchased like the first one to now is like drastic wild changed. yeah yeah drastic mm -hmm. you know so um like the house that we got in Joshua Tree that we just sold it I believe we bought it for 295 it was a three bed one bath and we sold it for 470 <laughs> is... and we got it in October I believe and just sold it last month that's crazy. Yeah, you like, got it. Wild? It's like you gotta sell that. Like, you know how many properties you could buy with like the the, the I money know. you just made? So many people on TikTok were like going in on us saying, like, we're so dumb. Why did we sell it? You know, but but we had that logic. So our our chems in the Smoky Mountains generate like three times what we make here in Joshua Tree. So we're like, let's 1031 that money into one Another of our one. cabins. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. There so, you go. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, um, I want to move on to the Hella Misguided segment where I ask the same question to each entrepreneur that comes up on here. And that question is simple. Maybe, maybe not. Um, that question <laughs> is, um, if you were to write a letter to your 18-year-old self, what would a summary of that letter be? Cute question. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Got to guide the youth, you know? Yes. Um, I think I would say... Um uh probably don't be I feel like I was always so consumed with uh society like pressuring you to pick a career path go to school for it and you have to do it for the rest of your life until you retire you know yeah. and I was so stuck on that and I changed my major several times until I found something that I was really passionate about which was the entertainment industry you know and then I found that and then got into the field and then it just wasn't what I thought it would, it would be, you know? So then I had this moment of life where I'm just like, okay, what am I doing with my life? What, what is my goal? You know? And I think all of that could have been avoided if I didn't give myself though, that pressure that I allowed society to put on me, you know, it's just like, yeah, you're going to figure it out. If you work hard and you try things, don't break, don't be afraid to try things. If it doesn't work out on to the next, you know, you're, 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 if you work hard and you're not afraid to try new things, you're going to figure out what, what you're meant to do in life. You know, that's like a, a reason. One of the reasons I started this podcast as well is because society misguides you in so many ways. Right. Um, 100%. And, and like, hey, you know, go to college. Hey, when you get out of college, go buy this fresh ass car. Right. Um, right. Right off the lot or or, you know, um, just just so much. I could, the list goes on. Right. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of why I started this is to to really 
kind of uncover those misconceptions by society and really, you know, um, dive deeper into why they're like that, but also how we can avoid them. Like I was always taught, Hey, like um, taxes suck, right? Like try, you yeah. know, try to avoid them as much as possible or like use your tax money to go buy hella Jordans, right? Right, um, right. <clears throat> and so now I fucking love taxes because I understand <laughs> depreciation and appreciation, right? Um, right? Obviously everyone hates taxes, but y- you know, th- it's not that like, oh, tax season, right? Like, th- let me throw my hands in the air. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know? um like you said 1031 exchange um thank god they're, they haven't gotten gotten rid of that yet but like those are outlets for investors and once the you know people um start to figure out how to manipulate the system um right. then it becomes their friend right so right we're, we're going to um maui for um brandon turner's um uh, Maui mastermind uh-huh. and we asked our CPA we're like this is a business trip can we write stuff she was like you can write it all off all right. off literally everything <laughs> <laughs> nice Once for business we're like we sure are yeah. <laughs> yeah when uh when are you guys going when is it uh <clears throat> September 22nd so that week nice nice is it at his yeah. house uh no it's at a hotel oh, in okay. Maui. I was yeah, gonna yeah. say that's a, that's a lot of people <laughs> yeah uh, that's cool that's cool um cool so besides real estate how else are you and your family building uh generational wealth are you guys invested in stocks 401ks iras whatever uh so stocks so like i said tony um came from his last corporate job was uh at tesla and one of the forms of uh um uh what's it called uh, <laughs> the way they paid their employees was um, one of the benefits. That's what I meant. To say. Uh, <laughs> one of the benefits was to give him um, stock. So he was there for the company for uh, a while and kind of grew in the corporate ladder quickly. So his his stocks um, grew also. So that's just kind of what we've been doing. And you know, we have a 13 year old son, and we also have just taught him about stocks. And he has his own. We got him a stock, a Tesla stock for his 13th birthday. So. That, that's what we're all about is just you know assets 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 you know i love it did he get to leave with a uh tesla do you guys have a tesla i wish <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man <laughs> give uh, us a few years a few years and we'll have one <laughs> yeah i'm waiting until they get like a little bit better i, I don't know. I, no. I, I know i know it's like better like what do you mean better but i don't know just like a little bit i need a little bit something extra right i love i love like my mustangs and like you know, I love, uh, I love Mustang. So, yeah, now Tony's dying for that really dramatic uh, cyber truck. Oh, yeah, that's probably never going to be released anytime soon. Yeah, <laughs> but um, or I, in our garage, you know, exactly. Um, I, I, I saw you mentioned uh, you have a 13 year old son and you guys are teaching him. So I just actually wrote a, a book about um, uh, money and how to manage it. So it's called Money, Money Talks, the Beginner's Guide to Investing. <laughs> Um, I think it would be great for, you, awesome. for your son. So maybe we could talk offline on how I to get him. One. Yeah. Um, it, it did really well. Good for you. Look at you. Killing it. Thank you. It debuted number <laughs> one on Amazon first day uh, and second day. No way. Congratulations. Yeah. So it was up there for maybe like a, a, uh, like a week or two. Um, it's been doing really well. Really good. You be, awesome. It's like, so like when we talk like generational wealth, right? Like I think putting your name on a book is generational wealth because now I'm getting passive income just from a book. But besides the passive income, it's like my name is out there, right? A hundred percent. That's so, so cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so really, and it's gone viral a couple of times on Twitter. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, I know you guys, lo- you guys that. always I go do. viral Wait, on hey, TikTok. <laughs> really? You got to, you got to teach me your ways. You're always in my algorithm. Well, that's amazing. Like literally yeah. I'm going to go show Tony, like we need to do more TikToks every day. Juwan said we're yeah. on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, well, we only have a couple more questions. Um, and one of them, I want to know kind of about the budgeting, right? Because, um, being an entrepreneur, being an investor is a little bit different in the ways you receive money um, as opposed to a W-2 job. W-2 job, you get it every two weeks. You know how right. much you're getting, right? Um, entrepreneurship, um, any business you own, investing, real estate, um, those are coming in 
and they're going, right? It could be your right. Airbnb deposits and then boom, utility out same day. So okay. it's like, you're so many deposits, right? Um, how are you budgeting? Do you have a system to, to know um, and kind of manage your gross income and your net income? Yes, but I am not the one that handles <laughs> So I can't answer it. Great. But Tony is like a math wizard. Um, he's always been, Tony's always been great with numbers. So that's just kind of, you know, so when, when we start became a team and did this uh, Airbnb business together, like we learned to have different roles in our partnership. So I, I don't need to do the budgeting and the math and, and, you know, and, uh, analyzing deals and stuff because I don't know how to do that one <laughs> and it probably won't be as good as it as Tony would be too you know so yeah. that's his lane that's what he does and um, I stay out of his way you know but he does have a very rigorous excel sheet he's very um, conservative with his numbers to make sure he does budget correctly and like you said you know um, being an entrepreneur is a little bit scary because you're not getting that money every two weeks you know so that was a little bit um, kind of challenging for me to accept when we decided to do this full time. It was a big shift. So, um, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yes, we do budget. I don't know how he budgets exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, yes, but, but Excel sheet. Yeah. That's good. By that's Excel good. sheet, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. I mean, yeah. And like, we don't pay ourselves very much, like, I think we just started to maybe a few months ago, started to pull some money to actually pay ourselves. But since we started like back in August, whatever we were making, we were putting into the next property. Yeah. So yeah. we were surviving off of our savings. If we had to pull money from stocks, we would do that. But we're just now starting to pay ourselves from the profits we're getting from our, our properties to put things into perspective, you know? Yeah. And the key way to do that is keep your expenses low. So like, do you guys have like a lot of expenses, like, you know, like from college, do you have college loans? I mean, obviously you have your house. Congrats on the new house. It looks beautiful. The kitchen. Does. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, that's what I said. So when we decided to do this full time, leave our jobs, and do real estate full time, I told Tony like, all right, let's cut our expend our personal expenses down just so one, I'm not freaking out every month, you know? And he was like, no, if we're gonna do this, he was like, let's live the way we're still living because that was his logic. I don't know if you also think he's crazy, but I think he's crazy for that. That's that's but a crazy wanted- logic. That's a crazy logic. <laughs> he was like, let's ma- maintain, like live the way we are. And we're not like lavish people or anything, you know, but yeah, I mean, our son is in, you know, basketball programs that are expensive and our mortgage, you know, like, yeah, yeah. that up. but he wanted to maintain and still live the way we do. And if we feel after a full year, so we, we gave ourselves to the end of this year, if we feel like money's too tight or we should go back to work, that we'll make that decision then. But so far, it kind of feels like we're leaning towards just, you know, tough it out and keep, you know, paving the way for, yeah. for something greater. Yeah. Well, well, I feel like that the reason he, he made that decision and I would love to hear his, his, uh, uh reasoning <laughs> for that, but is to give him motivation, right? Because when you, when you, it gives a motivation to actually stick through and go through this and not even get to where you need to be, but surpass where you need to be. You know what I mean? Right. And so yeah. um, that, that could possibly be the drive for, for wanting to keep yeah. up your, your expenses like that. But that's super interesting. Um, cool, cool. So if you were to describe who Sarah Robinson is in three words, who, who, who would you be? What are the three words? Mm, three words. Um, I'm God damn, that's a hard question. <laughs> it's like a life question, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I stump people <laughs> here all the time. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I think what three words. Okay, so if I died tomorrow, what would people say about me? <laughs> I would um I'm very thoughtful. I think I'm like one of the most thoughtful people in the whole wide world. So that's something about me you just sounded like and, a little a little girl said like a little five-year-old I'm very thoughtful in the whole wide world <laughs> that's me and I'm very proud of that yeah. um 
and I think I am fun. I don't know, Javon, this is a hard question. Um, you and, are really stumped I'm, right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm stumped. Like, oh my gosh, what do other people say? What no. would you say? They say, oh, oh, you're switching it up on me. All right, I'll tell you what I'd say. You got to give me your uh, last one, though. Okay. What's your last one? See, girl, you can't even say it. No, go ahead. You give me your last one first. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, and I'm funny, I guess. But that's so boring. You, you said fun. You said, you said all right, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um <laughs> uh i'd say father has or father um detail oriented and um a go-getter oh okay three words that's nice i'll still go get it that's my last one all right, all right for sure for sure um cool cool let's see let's see do you have any other thing uh things to say for the audience um any things to help them get started in business any things to to um to kind of to overcome right because as an entrepreneur you you go through a lot right um one of yeah. the one of the main things you go through is support right getting support from friends and family um that 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 kind of is the first step so can you kind of explain maybe the support you got from your friends and family when you were like hey me and tony are gonna start this real estate investing and we're gonna stop our w2 jobs yeah, so we decided to do this in the middle of COVID. So I think, oh. uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, I think the majority of our friends and family thought we were crazy, you know. And even continuing on, like it's a it's a mixture of really feeling that support and people rooting for you, and then you also notice that people closest to you, you can feel that they're not rooting for you, you know. So we've recently come to that realization, and it and it hurts, you know, but um there's just gonna be haters all, all in every shape and form you know so don't let those people closest to you that have a big influence on you if they happen to be not very supportive don't let them wear and tear you down you know it's just Absolutely. some people don't want to see you some people don't want to see you succeed more than they are you know and it doesn't matter if you're related or friends for years you know that happens and don't let people like that stop you guys absolutely yep 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 I feel it. I feel it. Cool. Cool. Well, we're about to uh, wrap it up. And how I like to wrap it up is with a segment called the guided conclusions, where I ask you a question beforehand that we haven't talked about previously. Honestly, we didn't even okay. talk about any of these questions previously. Usually I kind of give like a rundown, but we just hopped right into it. So I stumped you on a lot of stuff. Um, today's question <laughs> could be serious, funny, heartbreaking, whatever. Um, so are you ready? Uh Oh, get, all get right. Your game face on. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, what's the hardest part of getting into real estate? Um, not knowing anything and then getting into it. I think just like the terminology, like I said, I didn't know even now, like you see me getting confused, like, wait, what's a brokerage again? What yeah. is a, you know, yeah. like there is a lot. I'm actually, I decided to finally get my real estate license. So I'm like taking the courses and I'm just flabbergasted at like the amount of things there are to know in real estate how many different layers there are in real estate and it can be confusing to tell so I think that is the hardest thing is just slowly peeling off the different layers of real estate and understanding it you know so you're not super super lost <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah there is a lot and and to even piggyback so off of that besides like knowing stuff about real estate, I think even in real estate preparing, you can prepare as much as you want to buy that first property. But when you buy it, something is going to go wrong that you did not prepare for. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just the, the name of the game and, and you just have to adapt. And I, and I don't even think it's, uh, I think the most successful people in, in real estate investing are the ones who can adapt and, and not give up once one little thing goes wrong. Right. It's yeah. finding a way that, that uh, finding a way around it and how can we fix it? Yeah. Um, so good advice. That, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Can I tell a story really quick about that? No. That no pertains to that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're super newbies. We've bought our first property in Joshua Tree. And um, I think it was the first week we were up and running on Airbnb. And then our guest tells us that um they're about to check out and they're like hey just so you know there's like brown water coming out of the 
um, drain in the shower every time we flush. And we're like, what? What is that? Turns out it was shit coming out of the drain. Um, yes. That's, that just made my stomach was, curl. We were like, what? What is what is even happening? Uh, yeah. And wait, out of the shower? Out the, uh, from the drain up. Oh, from the drain So whenever up. they would flush the toilet, oh, oh. they would flush the toilet and then the water yeah. level. Can yeah. you believe that? So we had no idea that, like, we knew that property was on septic. We've never dealt with septic here in SoCal, you know, like, we're completely clueless to it. Now we have this major septic issue that we needed to get county approval, like, so many things, but it put us at a standstill, you know, when we just got up and running. It's like, we finally figured out how to get an Airbnb, and then bam, you know, so... Yeah. girl i had to figure out how to work something <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice how long did it take so, you to, you know, to figure had... it out um i called maybe like 20 plumbers and, and that's how they figured it out but yeah there was a lot of permitting that needed to happen because of uh the joshua trees there like in danger it's just, there's a whole lot to that you know but okay i if i if i was not a go-getter you know i could have said you know this is too much like that's it. Let's sell this house. <laughs> Let's yeah. leave it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, the, things are going to come up at whatever property you're at. And you just got to have the, the strength to <laughs> figure out how to fix it and keep pushing. Most definitely. Most definitely. Cool. Cool. And I, uh, I remember you said you were working on getting your real estate license right now. Um, yeah. Cool. Do you plan on taking the test anytime soon? Um, probably by the end of the year, I just started the courses and oh my gosh, it's so dense. I just like, yeah, like freeze on the, you know, on, on the computer. I'm like, oh Lord, I go Tony and I tell Tony, I'm like, did you know that this meeting? <laughs> well, let me know. Let me know when you, uh, when you, uh, pass here or when you finish, uh, studying and stuff, uh, the fly homes, we have, uh, opportunities open and a lot in, oh, awesome. in Los Angeles. And so there's some really cool cool stuff for you um cool thank you yeah yeah so um cool go ahead and drop your tiktok instagram all your stuff where where people can reach you and get a hold of you awesome so on instagram you can find me at sarah rad that's s-a-r-a-a-r-a-a-d and then on tiktok you can find us uh at the real estate robinson and then on youtube the real estate robinson nice nice okay guys thank you for listening make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you go follow the robinsons um this is the misguided podcast we intend to guide you to a better future my name is Jawan rohan and i'll see you on the next episode bye bye sarah